We have done many stories on the American dairy system and how dairy farmers have actually gone out of business by the thousands. But in Canada, the producer's price is set and the supply managed to protect income. How does the Canadian system work? Here's Peter Tubbs. Each liter of milk these cows produce is profitable because they are Canadian. Unlike dairies in other parts of the world, Canadian dairy producers operate in a closed, managed system where the producer's milk price is set and supply is managed to meet demand. Hans Gorder emigrated from the Netherlands in 1988 because of the affordability of farmland in Manitoba and the stability of the dairy market. Uh, I hear people that call it makes it inefficient. It makes it probably more efficient than anything else because you know what your top dollar will be. How can I be successful by having the least amount of cost to get there? The Canadian Dairy Commission was formed in 1966 with a mandate to ensure efficient producers obtain a fair return and consumers have a stable and consistent supply. Demand estimates and production quotas are set in concert with dairy production boards in each province. Each producer must buy enough of the provincial quota to match the output of their farm or face penalties. The quota system gives each producer a small percentage of the overall Canadian dairy market and eliminates the downside risk of falling milk prices brought on by overproduction. With overall milk demand flat in Canada, dairy producers have maintained a steady yield with a gradually shrinking herd. Milk output has risen 15 percent since 2009 as the Canadian herd has shrunk 4 percent. The supply management system has held the farm gate price of milk 20 to 40 percent above the global average, depending on exchange rates and global prices. Sales of quota allotments are controlled by the provincial boards and can only be sold within the province. A price discovery process occurs each month where buyers and sellers submit sealed bids. The bids are averaged to determine the strike price and sales are then completed. Some farmers find it easier to buy additional quota volumes as their herds become more productive rather than culling cows as they approach their limit. Provincial marketing boards like Dairy Farmers of Manitoba also assist in bringing new entrants into the dairy business. Successful applicants will see their initial quota purchase doubled by a forgivable loan, increasing the amount of equity each beginning farmer can leverage to get up and running. David Weens is a dairy farmer and the current head of Dairy Farmers of Manitoba. Knowing what his farm's income would be years into the future simplified the conversation with his banker when Ween sought to build a new barn and install an automatic milking system. Because we were able to do um, a longer term plan, we were able to make a, a march, much larger investment than we would otherwise have been able to do. So we could, you know, we could go to our banker and say, you know, this is, uh, this is what we'd like to do. Here's the, here are the numbers, you know, we expect that it will work. So the banker's question isn't, what do you think is going to happen in the market? Like, is, have you figured that into there? It, the, the question is, does the banker think we're good managers and we're capable of doing the ex kind of expansion that, that we were planning? The stability of the market comes at a cost for both consumers and producers. On the consumer side, academic studies find prices for dairy products can run as much as 30 percent more than retail prices in the United States. Dairy farmers of Canada dispute the assertion and argue that there is no significant premium for consumers. Between high tariffs and managed supply, the system is viewed as an unfair subsidy scheme by the World Trade Organization. The WTO label limits export of Canadian dairy products to small volumes. And while the Canadian consumer market may appear attractive to nations with a milk surplus to deliver, the potential slots to fill are relatively small. Canada's 35 million people number fewer than the population of the state of California, and the nation milks less than a million cows, a total smaller than Wisconsin's entire herd. There is no shortage of academic research calling for the elimination of the management systems for Canadian dairy, eggs, and poultry. The primary complaint is the additional 335 to 550 Canadian dollars each household spends on just dairy each year. Canadian cattle and pork producers export large volumes to world markets and remain profitable without a supply management system 
or tariffs to keep imported meat products out of domestic freezers. Dairy producers point to the time-sensitive nature of their output as the primary reason for keeping the system. There's a recognition that it's important for dairy farmers to work collectively. And I think part of it is, is there's a real need. Uh, dairy is, is an extremely perishable item. It's not something that you can store up and wait for better prices to come along. Uh, so, you know, quite vulnerable in that sense. And it's been a more obvious choice. The desire for supply management came out of, out of uh, experience of what it was like, you know, to have basically no power in the marketplace. Recent surveys show the Canadian consumer is supportive of supply management systems in dairy, eggs, and poultry, revealing an 80% approval rating, and higher retail prices are justified by high animal welfare standards and consistent supply. With little consumer or political interest in abandoning the national supply management system, Canadian dairy producers are able to continue to take the long view. And discipline is their biggest thing. We cut back when the market doesn't need our milk. We are more, uh, say that the price we get is more important than the amount of cows we milk. To milk cows for the lowest price was never an option for the Canadian farmer.